Well, how y'all doing? I got myself a feisty little knife here, and uh, I do mean that in uh, both of those words. This one isn't uh, particularly huge. This is the Chili Pepper from Kaiser. This is another uh, Swags design, which, uh, hey, I'm always happy to see uh, female designers and stuff like that. She's not the only one out there, really, but uh, she's a little bit uh, prominent, and uh, I really do like to support that. Uh, I do have one other knife from her that's been around for uh, quite a while. It's also a Kaiser. This is the uh, the Swayback. This is a button lock, but it was originally a, uh, a liner lock. This one is the uh, the White Mountain Knives exclusive, so it's got uh, this funky brown micarta and 154cm rather than the uh, N690 that the originals did. Uh, she also has another uh, really popular knife out there called the Mylea, uh, which she actually named after one of her best friends, if I remember uh, hearing her right from uh, one of the uh, uh, recent uh, Blade conventions. I think it was Shot Show, but uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but that one is, it's just too small for me. Um, you know, I, I got some really, really large hands, and that is not really designed to be uh, used for uh, someone with uh, those size hands. Eh, makes sense. Not everything's designed for me. I understand that. Uh, this is, of course, a button lock, uh, as was this... Um, yeah, the uh, the sway back here. This was kind of one of the first ones that I think uh, Kaiser basically uh, introduced because that was uh, that's quite a few years old at this point. But they've been uh, continuing on with it. Um, yeah, so we definitely have that uh, bird's eye chili kind of thing going on there. If you're familiar with um, Thai cuisine or something like that, then uh, yeah, uh, good thing we don't really have uh, the seeds in the middle here. <laughs> But we do have uh, basically blacked out hardware all the way around. We got 154 CM steel on this guy here. And uh, they haven't really mentioned uh, exactly what uh, blade coating that they're using here, but uh, my best guess is uh, PVD. Uh, pretty thin behind the edge. So a lot, quite nice for a lot of EDC tasks. The uh, pun plunge grind is, uh, well, it's fairly gradual uh, because the blade stock uh, at the beginning isn't uh, super, super thick on it. And the blade is technically out in front of it, but it, it'll it still probably end up causing you some problems uh, uh, after a few sharpenings on it. A uh, really, really small pocket clip that you can uh, swap over to the other side. Always glad to see that. Kaiser's... Uh, pretty good at doing their actions recently uh this one i have not actually uh taken apart and cleaned out and re-oiled and it feels like i could probably get just a little tiny bit better action out of it but uh it's still still it is uh essentially drop shot so <laughs> there's definitely that uh, as you can see, basically, if I want to, uh, grip this with my, uh, index finger where that needs to be, we got all sorts of jumping up on the top here, but this is a three finger knife for me. Uh, however, uh, what made me, uh, actually want to, uh, pick this one up, whereas I skipped the Mylea, was, uh, the fact that, uh, it does have that platform up there for you to get closer to the blade. And that also gives me full four finger grip access there. If I'm really doing the, the whole gorilla uh, hammer grip sort of thing, which I I can do that from time to time, especially if I'm really trying to muscle through some uh, thick cardboard or something like that. But it's not something that I end up doing all the time. But I do appreciate uh, the jimping being farther out on it. So uh, I do still have jimping when I'm out here. Uh, what I've noticed is, at least for my hands being larger, uh, the thumb stud isn't exactly the easiest for me to do because I have to push the knife a bit further up in my hands than uh, I would normally grip knives if I'm going to be deploying them that way. But the front flipper works super, super great on it. And, of course, you also have centrifugal force for it. Uh, they do have that, uh, that nice red anodized, uh, kind of look to them though. So that's nice, but I could always remove that if that was just kind of bothering me and I didn't really, you know, I probably won't end up using it for, uh, too much in the way of, 
uh, deploying the blade. That and uh, you always run that risk when you have a blade that's very very close to the handle of um, the thumb stud being in the way of some of that blade there. So <laughs> uh, I I could certainly understand some other people um, pulling that thumb stud out because uh, well, it's, it's kind of nice, but uh, you know not necessary. I do like that this thing has a uh, particular uh, theme going on for it. Um, in this particular uh, design, uh, this is basically the variant you get. Whereas, you know, a lot of other knives um, have, you know, G10 and Micarta, and maybe there's an upscale version with some uh, weird G10 uh, or other kind of uh, composite materials there, and blacked and unblacked blades, and possibly... Um, uh, black and uh, standard finish for the uh, liners and uh, other hardware. This one is like, nah, it's black and red. That's what you get. And, uh, you know, it works. And it's definitely different. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of knives that are that uh, vibrant red out there. So that's cool. The uh, pocket clip, as you can see on both sides, uh, is not inset in there. But um, those... Screws there are uh, definitely inset, so that's great. It's not uh, super thick there, but uh, that's, I mean, this thing is really probably not designed for doing a lot of uh, really, really heavy use. So you probably wouldn't have this on some uh, ridiculously thick uh, canvas work pants or something crazy like that. And besides, she's, uh, she's a little bit more of a... Uh, Of a, uh, a a more traditional woman, I suppose you could say, rather than uh, being a little bit more um, uh, butch, I suppose is still probably a an acceptable phrase to say for um, some of those more uh, tom girls slash uh, you know butch lesbian kind of things. Um, and as such, she always definitely looks for a little bit of different ways for her to actually um, attach this to. Standard female clothing, which, um, you know, as far as I'm, as far as I've seen, uh, don't really have pockets all that much. Um, so <laughs> you have to uh, think about uh, different things. Um, probably like latching that onto a purse strap or something. I don't particularly know. It's, uh, it's not really my thing, but <laughs> it's, uh, still, I appreciate, um, you know, having them in the, the industry and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I really like the design of this thing. It's it's just quirky, but uh, still really functional. It's uh, not quite Persian, but uh, not too much as far as a drop point or anything like that goes. We, we have a bit of a trailing point above the, um, uh, above the pivot there. So in that way, uh, trying to do, um, you know, standard... Uh, uh, utility tasks if you uh, specifically need the tip on that. This one might be just a little bit more difficult to uh, to end up using that, but uh, I mean, for me in general, I don't particularly care all that much because as long as, um, you know, the knife at that belly is uh, decently sharp, it's going to bite into whatever I'm doing for that start of the cut. But, you know, it might be something that... Um, you uh, certainly appreciate a little bit more of a, uh, a worn cliff or a sheep's foot for a lot of those uh, utility tasks. And hey, for that, you also have that swayback. This thing comes in a lot of different variants, including purple G10, which um, I was really tempted for a long time to pick up until I saw that this one had some upgraded steel. So, oh well. <laughs> Yeah, really liking this. Uh, I did mention earlier it's in 154CM steel. That's uh, it's also really good stuff. Um, 154 is, uh, I, I guess it basically used 440C as a baseline for it. Uh, and then they've modified it and, of course, done some other stuff to it. Um, very, very similar to uh, what you would see between... Um, Uh, any of the D2 variants. So that includes DC-53, but uh, also uh, crewware, like this guy. Obviously, it's a particle metallurgy uh, version of it, so it'll be like CPM D2 or something like that. But that was a, a decent segue into uh, trying to do some...
size comparisons here. I don't know. So, yeah. Much smaller than usual. I don't think the Enduro was probably needed for that. Uh, but some that are probably a little bit more appropriate would be like the K-Bar Dozer here. And, hey, that makes sense as well. The uh, Kalashnikov 74 in that uh, Desert Warrior pattern. That always amuses me. And, sure, we'll go with some bench mates here. There's the 940 that's uh, larger. And there's the uh, bug out. But yeah, not exactly a uh, super, super large knife. But uh, I got all of that stuff. I don't honestly know all of the uh, measurements on this thing. So uh, I will go ahead and figure those out now. Um, if you're not super interested in that, uh, after this, I'm going to uh, pull it apart, kind of look at the inside. If you're not interested in either of that, those things, uh, that's perfectly fine. If you are curious about the, um, the measurements, though, they will be down in the description, so you can check that out. And, uh, peace out whenever you feel like it. So, all right, for the rest of us, let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, measuration here. Let's see, I really don't care about blah 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 thousandths as far as uh blade stock is concerned we got basically 2.85 uh for the uh blade stock thickness on this nice and thin so uh yeah that is definitely why uh there's not a, a huge amount of a plunge grind down there but still nice and thin behind the edge so that's pretty cool let's see as far as thickness, we got basically 12.9 millimeters. That's a little touch over a uh, half inch. So basically right around what the uh, Spyderco PM2 is. And blade length on this guy here. We got... Uh, I always like to measure from basically as far back as you could bury the blade into whatever. And then going to the tip there, and we have undecidedly, or uh, actually, uh, <laughs> not undecidedly, but decidedly under three inches. So that is uh, great for those people who uh, really like to uh, end up carrying something like that, that uh, has some uh, restrictions. Well, you can still carry around yourself a chili pepper, and that means basically 76.1 millimeters. So there's that. How about if we go ahead and get some weights going too? All right, just a touch over three ounces. So just barely misses that ounce and inch mark, but mirrors makes no difference. It's there. What are you gonna do? A three ounce knife is uh, basically nothing. Uh, but yeah, we got, uh, what, 87.1? Yeah, 87.1. Uh, so about 87 grams. Not too bad. This will be a, uh, nice light one, uh, for the, uh, the warmer summer months. If you are, uh, enjoying some, uh, thin, uh, cloth material for, uh, shorts or, uh, whatever else that you, uh, might be ending up wearing there, so... Works out great. All right, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of this guy. We can see the, um, a lot of times, uh, Kaiser for their uh, button locks will uh, do everything from the, uh, the show side rather than the, uh, the, uh, you know, the clip slash, uh, whatever the other side you want to call that in this particular instance is. So that's the side that I will be, uh, pulling away from here. We got uh, T6 screw for the for the back there, and then of course T8 for the pivot. Feels like we have some um, medium Loctite going on in here. Yep, it's all blue and stuff. Yep, we got some uh, some grace and things like that on the inside. Definitely not. Uh, unexpected by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of times these things are kind of a pain in the butt to uh, get in further uh, the first time around. You can kind of uh, wiggle them a little bit, try to get them to uh, release. Or you can, um, you know, obviously use a uh, spudger. 
Uh, you know, for the most part, uh, I would probably suggest using a, uh, a plastic one, uh, just depending on uh, how much force you end up wanting to uh, put on the darn thing. And, you know, obviously you don't really want to scrape and uh, go all sorts of will and nelly on it. <laughs> but you do need to uh, actually disengage the darn thing. A lot of times, if I can get the back out on some knives, I can swivel it around. But because this is a button lock, that ain't going to happen. But, uh, hey, I at least have the, uh, the back out of the way here, so I can uh, start working on that. Usually, once you've done this the first time or something like that, uh, you don't really have all sorts of, uh, troubles doing it further on. But, man, this guy is really anchored in place. Well, here, hold on one moment. Well, I'm back. Uh, watch bar tool, uh, strikes again in a good way here. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously this thing is uh, a little bent and whatnot, but I, I have used it basically to, uh, push a little of the little bit of the uh, the pivot back through there and uh, that basically let it let go so I can uh, open up the rest of it here we got their uh, standard spring in there uh, they always use um, the uh, the scale material for their springs hey, a spring isn't uh, super crazy strong in there we got uh, brass cages around some itty bitty little uh, ceramic bearings going on in there we got a stop pin, of course. And then, yeah, we have uh, that, which is a little bit different uh, than the last couple of uh, Kaisers that I've taken a look at. The uh, the Hiccup and the uh, the Cormorant XL, where that um, button actually rode through uh, a basic ring in the blade there, so it was basically always on it. Whereas this one, you know, is a little bit more of their uh, independent one. A little easier to put these back together, uh, so happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, this pivot is um, quite difficult to be able to uh, fully remove. It looks like it was um, shoved in probably with uh, <laughs> quite a, uh, a bit of force there in the, uh, the jig when they were putting it together. But, hey, I got it apart as much as uh, necessary. It is D-shaped, and uh, it's basically right where it needs to be, so hooray for all of that. Uh, I don't really think it's necessary to uh, end up doing the, uh, the whole cleaning and stuff like that here. Um, so I suppose I will just go ahead and end the video here. Um, you know, obviously you've already seen this thing uh, put together, so you don't really necessarily need to see that happen again. So, uh, yeah, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.